Brian from quantlabs.net here. I just wanted to let people know about this uh, fiasco that I've uh, caught on with this uh, posting about uh, generating um, code, either C Sharp or DLL, uh, .NET DLL, with um, the uh, MATLAB, uh, and then from there trying to deploy it into a Visual Studio .NET project. Um, thing I'm learning about this, and this is coming from this link here, uh, there's a couple of notes. Um, let me just pull that up actually. Uh, I'm just going to recap everything here. Alright, so um, basically uh, here, here's some integrating MATLAB with C Sharp. Now the, the problem is is that when you use the builder uh, NE toolbox, it builds uh, unmanaged uh, source code, uh, especially if you are using the C shared library option. Um, so it's unmanaged code. Now that means that you're going to run into all kinds of problems, be it with um, uh, it said it's 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 frag this this the op that option is very fragile. Um, yeah, it's not a not a not a solid solution. Uh, some of the problems are. Uh, let me just pull it up here. Upon upon further inspection, it should be clear that typing moving from managed to unmanaged code dramatically increases the risk of uh, data handling errors, uh, the lack of intelligence, automatic data marshaling, and garbage collection uh, is not part of that. Uh, so, what does that mean? Um, I've, uh, what I've done is I've, I've created a blog and another YouTube video on this. Um, now I've created another posting uh, what to do about uh, the confusion of managed code and unmanaged code. So let me uh, show you uh, the solution. Um, essentially, um, if you create in your mat in your Visual Studio here, uh, I've got a project here called uh, Test CLR Class Library. Now, when you go in and you create a new C++ project, um, so let's say under C++, you have all these different options. So if you have MFC, Test, Win32, ATL, uh, all that, I'm going to take a large assumptions unmanaged code. But when you come under here under your CLR, which is your common uh, library runtime that enables you to uh, inc uh, uh, build that C++ DLL for .NET. So uh, essentially this is the option that you should go with when you're building um, a DLL, a C++ DLL for a .NET application. So I've done that and you, if you look under the properties here um, you'll notice under com uh, configuration type it's a DLL but Common language runtime support. Very, very critical. Okay. Here are the other options. Um, I'm just going to do the default to that. And what does that make the code look like? Here uh, in C++, we have a new reference class. Uh, code lo still looks the same. And uh, when you build it, uh, it's still a DLL. All that all builds fine uh, successfully. Let me just clean it and then just show you that. Uh, so as you can tell, it, it will rebuild everything uh, with the one successful, which is good. So we've now created our DLL, which resides here. Uh, so let's say if I have a client application calling this new C++ DLL. Now I've created a C Sharp application. Okay, this is a C Sharp. Um, uh, .NET application. It's a console app. Okay, so what I was able to properly do was to add a reference. Now, if you look here, you 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 have that DLL I just created in my C++ test class lib DLL, which is this guy right here. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's just it's this one right. Uh, this one. Test CLR class library. That's the DLL we just uh, created. Test class CLR class library. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is the client that we're going to call it and just test to see if it all all works 
find. So we add that as a reference to this project. Uh, and it's just right there. So now we have all our IntelliSense uh, right here. So that's working. So now we can treat it as if it's generated from uh, a, a .NET application, but it's actually C++ instead. So it's managed code now. So we're able to uh, create uh, I'll call that test uh, class uh, right here. This is our test class that we're calling from from uh, the, within the, the the C++ and then be able to call the object of the function f. Okay, and and and, and that builds no problem either. So. The key is when you are generating uh, from C++, namely from the, uh, namely from MATLAB, you need to make sure you include that CLR support. And that's all dependent upon how you build it from your, um, from your, uh, from your, uh, <coughs> from your CLR, or when you create your uh, C++ uh, project. Okay, so you need to I make sure you include your CLR uh, support. So let me just rebuild my uh, C++, or sorry, C Sharp app. See, it works no problem. Um, I'm not sure if this will run, but uh, it is a console app. Yeah, no big deal there. Uh, but uh, if I go into the, um, into the, uh, into the proper library, I should be able to uh, call it. Let me just try that, make sure everything's all cool. So we're calling the uh, this one right here. Let me just I'm going to run it from the uh, console or the DOS prompt or the command prompt. Sorry. So I'll just go to this directory here. There you go. Uh, we should be able to run it. Haha, -ha, no. Uh, Brian again here from quantlabs.net. Uh, what you'll notice in the previous segment is I came across a exception. <laughs> um, I'm not going to repeat the exception, but you'll get some strange uh, something that won't work. Uh, potentially a solution is, um, just so people know, um, up here, I'm using the latest version or the current version of Microsoft uh, Visual Studio. Um, in Visual Studio, this version here, sometimes you'll get, um, y you know, you, gotta, you got your mode if it's debug or release. And uh, if it's going to be 32-bit versus a 64-bit. Now, it can get kind of confusing for people uh, if you're fairly new to this world. Um, sometimes in here you might get options uh, on, in your projects of uh, where under Active Solution Platform it might say any CPU. Um, what you need to do is you need to make sure that whatever... Uh, version of Windows you're running. So in my case, like pretty well everything today is 64-bit. But you never know, you might get a Win 32-bit, um, maybe on XP or something, I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you want to make sure that when you're creating your C++ DLL, um, in my case, uh, here, this test CLR, that it's 64-bit and also that uh, if I'm going to allow a client application to run it or access it, make sure it's in release mode, okay? Um, that way in your C Sharp application, in the client here, when you add your uh, reference, okay, here, um, the properties, what you need to make sure is that you, because Again, you want you want your client application to match in your C sharp, okay? So it's release 64 bit. Again, um, because my DLL from C++, the CLR version, is again release 64. So they both need to match, okay? You won't see this error uh, at compile time uh, when you build it from within Visual Studio. 
but when you try to run it when you have uh, different modes or different versions you'll get a, some kind of runtime exception so make sure again that these two are both the client and that you're generated uh, DLL match both I would assume for release and 64-bit now when that's the case you can now run it so here um, if I do run the CLR like I tried before obviously you won't run it, see it but um, you see it has an exit code of 0 which means it's successful so if I go back to my um, my dot my DOS uh, my command prompt um, I can run this program now okay so this is exactly what we want console right line x equals 1 which is exactly uh, what you'll see here okay so um, that's running now uh, let me just go back into my DOS maybe I can show you the exception you'll get uh, yeah right here here's here's a typical example of, of that exception so because I'm, I'm running maybe uh, a different uh, version on the DLL that's generated because it's not 64-bit and it's not in release mode you'll get this could not load file or assembly the test uh, CLR class library blah 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 it just it, it's not it doesn't match up so that's what I'm saying in order to uh, get around that make sure you again use the release and 64 bit or make sure both match on your uh, C sharp so nonetheless this is how you are able to have a dotnet application or client namely in C sharp call a C++ generated um, uh, C++ generated uh, assembly with the CLR support. So there you go. Uh, hopefully I'll help you out.